Well, good morning. Thank you, organizers, for having me here. It's really a journey through the past to get into small German villages and to German airfields. I spent quite some time with my grandfather flying from Sweden to Germany and back when I was in my teens. And, and I really like this kind of environment. I will give kind of a personal reflection on where I see assistance and automation inside the field of, of vehicle safety. And I must also say, I come from the Vision Zero perspective. I was part of the team launching Vision Zero more than 20 years ago. And the vehicle definitely plays an extremely important role in this. But we must never forget the vehicle is playing in an environment with the users, the usage, and, and the roads. Uh, we have seen tremendous success the last few years. And as we heard before, it's very much, and I'm glad, Michelle, you mentioned it, it is because of the work from manufacturers and suppliers. It's not Euro NCAP improving safety. It's actually industry improving their products. Uh, and that knowledge has been increasing very, very rapidly. I think the kind of discussion you can have with a vehicle manufacturer today compared with 20 years ago is completely different. And I must say it's also a very fruitful discussion with less barriers than we had 20 years ago. We've had the basic regulation always being there, pushing for the lowest performers, but we had the NCAP programs there to give credit to the best performance all the time. And that kind of journey where some manufacturers started to show we are better than the rest have actually spurred all manufacturers or virtually all manufacturers to deliver a lot better. But we also have specific technologies. We have stability control, which today seems to be a commodity. It has reduced fatal loss of control crashes in Sweden with over 90%. Over 90% of the fatal loss of control crashes are gone in cars with ESC. We have seatbelt reminders, perhaps a trivial thing, but it has helped the non-users to increase their seatbelt use. Eight out of 10 non-users put their seatbelt on with the seatbelt reminders we see today. And that goes all the way to the fatal crashes. We see how the number of unbelted fatalities is reducing very rapidly now when these cars are getting out to traffic. We have scientific evidence for the benefits of autonomous emergency braking and also for lane departure warning. We see huge progress. And this slide is already a bit historic, but it's a good reminder of what we have done. It's looking at the relative safety level of cars from the, around 1990, around the year 2000 and 2010. So remember, these are not the most modern cars. It's not what we can buy as the best one today. And still we have an 86% reduction of fatality risk over a 20-year period. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that something that many engineers should be extremely proud of? We know that some of these improvements are coming from improved road infrastructure, speed limits, etc. But about two-thirds of the real benefits we see are coming from the exchange of the vehicle fleet. I look at crashes as a process going from normal driving into the crash. And we now have technologies working all over this spectrum with ESC and some emergency braking, getting you back into normal driving. You have some cars preparing for the crash when they know that the crash is unavoidable and you have all the safety in the vehicle. Different time perspective and different numbers. Uh, and just getting back to what we see in Sweden, our prognosis for in-car fatalities is that 20 years ago or 15 years ago, we had over 360 fatalities in cars. In five years, we will be at around 50. We're a bit slower than our projection that we made some years ago. So we see how this safety focus has started to deliver very rapidly. And we have more and more technologies coming. We're a bit behind schedule, that's why I'm a bit quick on the slides. Uh, so vehicle safety has improved tremendously. The automated functions have actually shown to almost eliminate some of the problems. We have good support to keep your speed. As Michelle showed, many cars now help the driver. We have good support for seatbelt, and we have good support for driver alertness, etc. The cars are getting into some kind of situation and awareness. And of course, as we all know, many work towards assistance and automated driving. 
But remember, we cannot take safety as the main driver for automation because we will achieve safety anyway. So there are other good reasons to automate the system. So I think the new thing is that instead of focusing on severe injuries and fatalities, an automated car has to be almost crash-free. Almost crash-free. I would never allow an automated car outside a school unless I'm pretty certain that that car can manage kids, bicycles, anything. I would not, not like to be in a car which is 90% good. But we must never forget that also for the automated cars, we need to have the, all the safety functions up and running. You know the Vienna Convention? Everyone is talking about the stupid paragraph about it should be a driver in the car. This is the most important paragraph saying the driver must always adapt the speed to the circumstance as so you can stop for any foreseeable object. That goes also for the automated cars. But the automated cars must, in this normal driving element, handle everything, not only a few things, everything. And that is a huge difference between the automated systems, which must manage everything all the time, and all of the safety systems we have, that perhaps is active once in the lifetime of the car. An airbag is typically active one time in the lifetime of a car, then we scrap the car. The ESC in my car is active less than 10 seconds per year. These automated systems must be there all the time. And for me, it's a big difference between assistance and automation. Automation must handle everything all the time. Assistance can manage a few elements most of the time, whether that is laying support, is managing that specific element of the driving, most of the time, whether it is lateral control, uh, longitudinal control, I mean, that is working most of the time for that specific element. For everything else, the driver has to fill in when you're in an automated system. And I think that is what today's exercise will show, that assistance systems have their limitations, and we should never have higher expectations than what they actually deliver. A few things in a few elements of the driving and for automation, everything all the time. But also with those systems, we need all the emergency and crash systems on the car. We cannot start to take that away for a long, long time to go. And I would even argue we should have a firewall between safety and emergency, crash and emergency systems and the driving element. If you do that, you can see that normal driving could be a human being, could be a human being under assistance, or could it be a computer, you still have the same safety functions if you get into a critical situation. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much for your attention.